Hi, my name is Michael and this is Brennan and we're with Bioness. We're going to show you today in this setup and unboxing video how to set up your Bioness integrated therapy system. First step is to remove all of the plastic that's on the crate. You're going to use a box cutter and you're going to make a cut from the very top of the box all the way to the bottom. Okay, now that the plastic has been removed, we're going to cut these green straps that are going over the top and all the way around the crate. The best thing to do is to cut these right at the base, right where the top of this ramp is. There's a third strap that you need to cut, and that's right here. We're going to cut it again just right next to the crate. And then we can lower the ramp. The next step is to cut the tape that's holding it together. There's tape all the way around these sides. We're going to cut that with the same box cutter. You're going to want to make sure to get all four sides. Since we have to roll the Bioness Integrated Therapy System off and down this ramp, we're going to have to lower this uh, lip of the cardboard. So we're going to make some cuts along that part of the cardboard as well. All right, the next step is to remove this outer layer of cardboard. And we're just going to make a cut all the way from the top down to the middle where the first split is. Go ahead and do that. All right, there's two pieces, so we got to remove the bottom one as well. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to make a cut down the middle from the top to the bottom. All right, now that we have the outer layer of cardboard off, we're going to take these other pieces of cardboard off, but we're going to take off the one in the middle first because these pieces are supporting the TV with foam. So we're going to pull these out. We're just going to take this piece off. All right, now that we have the front and back panels off, we're going to take off the cardboard on the sides that have the foam that are supporting the TV. Now we're ready to cut the straps that are holding the bit system on the pallet. So we're going to cut those at the anchors down at the bottom. And we're going to remove the foam wrap that's covering the base. All right, before you roll bits down off of the pallet, we want you to remove these foam blocks. So we're just going to put a, a small amount of upward force on bits and just pull them out. So we're going to leave the foam and the cardboard that are strapped onto the monitor on when we roll it down for safety reasons. Now we're ready to remove the foam and the cardboard. I'm going to start by cutting these straps just right here at the top. And we can remove the foam wrap as well. I'm going to turn it around and we're going to show you the back. All right, now that we have the bit system off of the pallet, we're going to show you how to make some adjustments to the monitor and the stand. So you'll notice that the monitor can rotate. Uh, it was intentionally left loose. So we're going to tighten that. Once it's level, there's just a little knob that's right in front of the stand and behind the TV. You just turn that clockwise until it's about as tight as you can hand to tighten it. Then uh, you'll notice that you can raise and lower the monitor. We're going to remove this cap and we're going to make sure that we tighten this so that it doesn't drift when we bring it all the way to the top. So we're going to bring it all the way to the top. And if it drifts, we're going to tighten it by turning this bolt on the top clockwise. And you can use a crescent wrench or a half inch ratchet. This may take several revolutions. Once that's done, you can put the cap back on. Always remember that before you move bits, you should push the monitor all the way down to its lowest position and then move it. You'll notice that there's a box connected to this rack at the base. 
we're going to remove this box. It includes a lot of the accessories like the remote, the manual, and the cords to plug in the monitor. We're going to set that aside so that we can review its contents later. Okay, now that we've removed bits from its pallet and we've unpackaged it, we're going to review the contents of all the other boxes. We've got the small brown box, which came with the hardware kit, with the monitor and the stand. We've also got the bit software kit and the bits computer kit. The bits computer kit and the bits software kit come in a separate shipping box. So remember that you're going to get two shipping boxes. You're going to get the big crate and you're going to get a smaller box with the computer and the software. Make sure that before you begin you review all the instructions. Those are found in the software kit and you've got all the tools that you need. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of scissors, and a measuring tape. Okay, so I've checked the contents against the labels. I know that I have everything I need. I've taken everything out of the box just so it's more easy to get to and uh, I'm ready to get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the PC. That mounts right here. You're going to get an Intel Nook computer. It's going to come in a box like this. And you're also going to have your, your Windows software. Uh, you don't need to do anything with that. We just send it to you. And the computer is going to come in a bag like this. Just remove it from the bag. Underneath the computer, there's some manuals and stuff. And there's a mounting plate. It looks like this. I'm going to set the computer aside. Inside your Intel computer box, you're going to have a little baggie full of screws. There's four silver ones and two black ones. We're going to start with the silver ones. And we're going to use those to mount the mounting plate that came out of the Intel box right here. This has an arrow that says this way up. And you're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to uh, attach that. All right, so when you mount this, it's very important that you use the outside corner holes because uh, that's what will attach it to the back. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the black screws to the back of the Intel Nook computer. You'll notice that there are two holes and we're going to screw in the, the mounting screws right there. And now you can see that I've attached those mounting screws. When you attach those you want to be careful that you're not over tightening those so you don't damage anything inside. And all we have to do is line up those mounting screws with these mounting holes and slide it down. So it should feel secure and snug, but then you should also be able to remove it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the USB hub. It comes in a box that looks like this. This is going to give us more USB connections because there's a few things we'll need to plug in. We're going to attach this to the top of the computer. Remember that after you've attached the Intel Nook, all of your HDMI and your power connections will be on the right side. But you do have one USB connection here on the left. You're going to use your Velcro connections. I like to put these together before I attach them. That way you don't have to touch the adhesive. It makes for a better uh, connection. I'm going to peel off one side and attach it to the back. I'm going to plug this in so I make sure that I've uh, got it in the right position. And I'm going to attach it on the top right here. Once I know where I'm going to put it, I'm going to remove this strip on the back. It goes right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in some USB devices. This is your BITS license key. It's a small purple USB connection. It comes in this metal tin. It says BITS license key on the front. 
take that out. It's got a little cap on it. I'm going to take that cap off. I'm going to plug it right in there. The next thing we're going to put in is your bits encrypted backup drive. A black USB connection. It says BIOS on the front. Take the little cap off. You plug that in right there. The next thing we're going to connect is the keyboard. The keyboard comes like this. That'll be in your computer kit. Inside your keyboard box, you're going to find this little keyboard dongle. That's going to plug in right here next to the other two. The batteries are already inside. You just need to pull these tabs. Now your keyboard's good to go. Make sure to turn it off when you're not using it so the batteries don't run down. The fourth position on your USB hub is for a USB connected printer. Uh, you're going to want to use a printer to print off reports and things like that. Uh, and uh, the USB connection is the only way to connect the printer. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got everything ready uh, so I can start plugging in my cables. Um, you've got a mount right here where you can mount your power strip and uh, these pieces on the back here are to hide your cables. We need to make sure they're in the right position. Uh, so we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to make that, that adjustment. We're just going to tighten this here. There are two screws here at the base. And we're just going to turn that clockwise. Just make sure that's secure. And then these are held in place by this screw here. They move up and down. And we don't want them to come all the way off the top, so we want to move them lower. So we're just going to loosen that just a little bit and slide everything down to about this position. So that the one on the bottom is about halfway or so uh, past the keyboard tray. Uh, keep in mind that you can remove the keyboard tray if you find it gets in the wheel, way of wheelchairs. Uh, but some people find it helpful uh, for the, putting the keyboard and the remote on. All right, now we're going to attach the power strip. We're going to put four pieces of the Velcro on the back. Remember, it's easier to put the Velcro together first so that you don't touch the adhesive. Attach that to the back. Once I've got both of those on, I'm going to peel the adhesive off of the other side. Now I'm ready to mount it. Now it's important that when you mount this, you mount this to the side closer to the back of the stand. So you don't want to be close to the stand, you want to be far away from the stand. Next we're going we're gonna to mount the cord for the PC. The PC cord is going to mount right here. And I like to put the Velcro on the side that does not have a label because the Velcro actually sticks better than the glue on the label, so it's possible to peel the label off. So you want to put it on the side without the label. Before you attach it, you want to make sure that you attach the other end of the cord so you know that, you have, that it will fit. That cord is also in the computer kit. So we're going to put that about there is good. Now we can secure the cord to the base so it doesn't move around. You want to make sure to leave enough out that you can still plug it in. But you're going to bundle this and we're going to secure this down with zip ties and the zip tie anchors. The zip tie anchors and the zip ties come in the software kit and we're going to use that to mount the cord so that it doesn't move around when you're using bits. You're going to start with 12 of these and uh, 12 of the zip ties. So you insert the zip tie through the zip tie anchor like this. And leave enough out. I'm just going to tighten that down. Another thing that's easier to do before you mount it is to cut the, uh, the zip ties. So we're going to do that first. Be careful when you're using scissors around cables so you don't cut the cables and uh, that can cause electrical problems or shock. So we're going to peel the back off. 
I'm gonna stick that down there. And we can plug it in. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the power cable to the TV. That comes in the brown box that came with your hardware kit. And this cable plugs in right here underneath the PC mount. Now you can't see it, but underneath the PC mount, there's a power switch. And uh, people often for, forget to check, but uh, you need to make sure that that's turned on. So it's down on the left side. And you're gonna secure this with another zip tie and a zip tie anchor. And you're gonna secure that right around the strain relief. And you're gonna make sure you get this oriented properly. So there are three prongs and the one in the middle should be on top. I'm going to cut off the end of the zip tie before we attach it. And now we're ready to peel off the backing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in the touch screen connection. It's a USB cable that hangs down here on this side of the TV. I'm going to unwrap that. And we're going to bring this over the top of the stand. And it's going to plug into the right side of the uh, computer. And we'll plug that into the bottom. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to plug in the HDMI cable. Looks like this. That one comes in the computer kit. It's got these little caps on the end of it. You're going to remove those. And that plugs in to the right side of the computer in one of the two HDMI ports. And that goes, again, over the top. And you're going to plug it in where it says HDMI in. OK, so now we're going to show you how to secure these cables. Your software kit comes with 10 feet of this cable wrap. You're only going to need about four feet, but I like to cut five feet just so that I uh, have a little bit of extra and then I can trim it at the end. So we're going to measure five feet and then we're going to cut it. Now that we've cut the tubing, we can insert both the HDMI cable and the USB cable coming from the touch screen into the tubing. You'll notice that the tubing splits down the middle. We're just going to insert both of these into that gap. We've got a little bit of excess tubing here, so we're going to cut that off right about here where the cable, where the tubing meets this edge of the monitor. Okay, now that we have the, the HDMI cable and the USB cable inside the tubing and it's been cut, we're going to secure both the HDMI and the USB cable to the back of the TV. We're going to do that with the zip tie anchors and the zip ties. Cut the zip ties before we secure the anchor. We're also going to put a zip tie here around the tubing so that the HDMI cable doesn't uh, come out. I'm going to attach that right here where the HDMI cable and the USB cable split. Okay, so now I've just attached the zip ties and zip tie anchors to the rest of the cabling behind the stand. And I'm going to attach them to this space back here and you'll notice that the back of the monitor is pretty textured and you have this vent area that's a little bit more smooth. Since there's more surface area, that's where you want to attach your zip tie anchors. There's more of a chance of uh, holding if you attach it there. So we're going to attach the two pieces, the two anchors right back there. Just like we did on the other side, we're going to secure the tubing to the uh, HDMI and USB cables. Put a zip tie right here. Okay, now we're going to wrap the power cables that connect to the TV and to the computer. We're going to start by unraveling the computer power cable. 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to plug in the computer power cable. It plugs in at the very bottom on the right hand side. And we're going to show you how to wrap the cables uh, through the back enclosure here. We're going to use the rest of the tubing and we're going to start with the PC power cable. I'm just going to start feeding it in. And when we get here, we'll start feeding in the monitor's power cable. Now that we have the cables all closed up inside this tubing, we're going to feed it into the sides of these things. They just lift up and you can put them right up into the sides. I'm going to do that up until we get through the third one and then it's going to hang down. Now it's very important that when you do this, you do this in the lowest position the TV can go so that it can go all the way down because that's going to be its, its uh, longest length. Once you're there, you can secure the, uh, the cable tubing with a zip tie. And you're going to do that at the point where the uh, TV cable exits. So you're going to do that on the, the far end. Now that we have that in there, we're going to raise the monitor all the way up to make sure it can go all the way up. And then we'll raise it and lower it down to make sure it can go all the way down. Now you'll notice that there's a lot more excess cable on the plug end. We're going to weave that up on this side. And we're going to come back down the other side. And then we can plug it in. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect the USB extension hub. This is so you can plug in a USB device from the front of the screen. We're going to plug this in right here above where we plugged in the touch screen and we're going to mount it here on the side. To secure the USB extension hub you're going to need the command strips and you're going to need a zip tie and a zip tie anchor. You're going to want to put the extension hub somewhere about five or six inches from the bottom. The command strip is this clear plastic clip and you have the adhesive part. Start by peeling off the back and sticking it to the back of the plastic clip. And we're going to fit the hub in so that it clips towards the back of the monitor. You're going to want to get that choked up pretty high up on the strain relief so that it's in there good and tight because remember you're going to be pushing and pulling the USB uh, connection out of there. Now that we've attached the USB connection to the side, we're going to just mount it to the back. We're going to create a loop. We have two loops. I'm going to secure it right here on this edge. Now that we have everything looking pretty, I'm going to show you a few things about the bit system. Down here in this corner you have a power button. It's also a joystick for controlling the volume if you turn it left and right. And up and down will scroll you through some menu options. We don't recommend using this button to turn the TV on and off. Once the TV's on, the computer should just power it down once you power down Windows. Also remember that you can remove this keyboard tray. There's just four screws on either side. You can remove it if you find it difficult to move wheelchairs all the way up to the screen. You'll want to remember that your power strip has a power button down here on the right. And you'll just want to make sure that that's turned on. So now I'm going to turn the TV around. You can raise and lower the monitor using one hand. And you can tilt the screen 20 degrees. That often cuts the glare that you get from room lighting. There are a couple of items that come with the hardware kit. One is the cleaning solution to use to clean the monitor. And another is a stylus. A lot of the programs in BITS 2.0 work better with a stylus. This is magnetic, so you can stick it to 
the side of the, the monitor. You'll also get a remote. Uh, you can use this to adjust the volume. The volume sensor is down on the bottom of the TV and there's a little window cut in the frame of the touchscreen bezel and you can just point. Before you use bits we recommend that you lock the casters. Simply step down on the brake like that and then to unlock it simply lift up. To calibrate your bits touchscreen click on the Windows Start tile in the lower left hand corner of the screen. This will launch the Windows Start menu. Click on Pulse IR Utility and locate PulseIRController.exe. This may not be available in your Start menu, so I'll show you how to find it using Windows File Explorer. Click on the icon in the lower left hand corner and then find Local Disk C, Users, Bits, App Data, Local, Bits, TSI Touch, Pulse IR Utility, and the file we're interested in is PulseIRController.exe. After we click that, we'll see this User Account Control window pop up, and we'll just click Yes. Now we're in the Pulse IR Controller. The most important option that we're interested in is this touch mode. We want to make sure that that's in stylus mode. Click on calibration and hit the target with your finger on the touch screen in the top left corner and then on the right and the bottom left. And then just hit OK. Click apply in the pulse IR controller window and complete and we're done with the calibration. That concludes the setup instructions for the Bioness Integrated Therapy System. Uh, in order to set up the software, refer to the clinician's guide included in the software kit. Thanks for watching.